Oh, yeah. Yeah. Leave it. She's reactive. <laughs> Do you have your e-collar or no? Oh, I felt like it looked like. Anyway, so she's see how her head's low. Yeah. So she's she's get ready. She's yeah, but she's more or less like I gotta go check it out. I don't think she would go and attack the dog. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing: is clinically, like we can control the environment, so I can say, oh, just let her go. But that's not gonna happen on your walk. Right. It's not going to help you. So yeah, we can let her go, and the behavior would probably subside, and she wouldn't be freaking out and be reactive. And you could probably walk her and not have a big deal about it, but that's never going to happen in reality, or it shouldn't. That's kind of irresponsible. So um, I want you to just here's going to be your line. These boxes. I want you to go from desk to box. I'm going to work her here, and I want you to to, to see if that correction that you're providing on the dominant dog collar is enough, because she clearly knows heel, uh, and she knows leave it. I want to see if that dominant dog collar is enough for her to go, okay, sorry. The dominant dog collar. Their slip collar, it's, oh, okay. it's another word for it, gotcha, sorry. Gotcha. So box to there, nice okay. and slow. Good. Pay attention that when you turn, I want you to pay attention. When you say heel, I want, yes, but I want, again, I want the words that come out of your mouth to command the dog to do what you want. I don't want the equipment to, you know, what they call back in the day, the, the jerk and crank type thing. When your voice says something, again, we talked about operant conditioning, mm -hmm. uh, consequence and reward based system. Sure. When you say something and she doesn't comply but she knows what, what she should be doing, that tells us, yeah, okay. Right? Good. Then we need to switch gears a little bit and say, well, what do we, like we talked about before. So try that. Okay. Pull you in. Pull you in. Hey! Sit. Sit. Pull you in. I'm just going to keep her right on here. Yeah. So we need to, so tell her to heal. Yeah. See how she's so engaged over here still? Yep. Hold it. Heel. Couché. I see. Uh, heel. Yep. Seats. Uh, uh. Leave it. Leave it. Okay. Hold it heel. Now tell her to heel. Yeah. But try to tell her, then, re then correct her if she doesn't do it. Okay. Hold it heel. Hold it heel. Although I have the suspicion she's not going to do it anyway. There we go. There we go. Who yeah. Now turn. So when you when you say heel, turn and, and show her. Don't, because I, I probably messed you up by telling you to heel. But when you come out, say heel and turn. Show her the picture. Of this is what heel is supposed to yeah. mean in that direction. Then if she does it, then correct her. And it's it's. It happens like that, yep. so just be prepared for I'm that. I'm sure my timing isn't great. Well, it's hard, because... Oh, yeah. Better, better. Good. Oh, yeah. Good girl. 
Oh, you don't. Okay, now this time I want you to drop the leash in your left hand, hang on to it with your right, walk towards her again, so you're not putting as much pressure on her, and then turn the other way and tell her to heal. Oh, yeah. Good girl. Good girl. Now walk back Good. again. Oh, yeah. Lassie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, yeah. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to switch gears. Because like I said before, I, I don't want to physically put all that pressure on her. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because when you, again, when you tell a dog to do something mm -hmm. and the correction happens, you're trying to fix and teach. If we're having to correct every single time, then we're not, she's not learning, which means we're not, you know what I mean? I do. So when she comes out, I want to say heal, and then the correction should be pop, yeah. and she goes, oops, sorry. And when you come back out, you say heel, and then she, I want her to go and slide in. Yeah. So I want to just switch to the micro prong. Good. I'll try it, and then we'll see. Because I, I hate that, like, boom, boom. Because you can do damage on the larynx and the trachea over time mm -hmm. um, if you do it wrong continually. So let's just switch to that. But my thing is, is even if it's in the right position, you're still physically nagging your dog. It should be, again, it's operant conditioning. Mm -hmm. Correcting the bad behavior, rewarding the good behavior. But it's important to understand that we need to teach her what we want instead of correct her. Because if we're constantly correcting, that gives fuel to the people out there that are going, tough correcting your dogs. And Well, right. But again, when you spell something wrong over and over and over again, then that's your fault. You're not paying attention to how to do it right. Gotcha. So let me just take her for a second. Sure. <clears throat> good. Yep. Good. So when I come out... Heel. Quick pop. Okay. Heel. Good. Good girl. Good decision. Heel. Good. I see. Seats. Little pressure. So again, I don't want that room. Right. Room like you were doing before. Right. And the prong collar provides that safer pop, 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 versus the boom. Bump, bump. Sure. Some dogs, this is just for her. This isn't for everybody. Sure. But some dogs are like, oh shit, to that, that um, slip, the collar that you have. Yeah. But for her, it's not working. And I don't want to constantly nag her. Because yeah. we're not teaching, then we're just. I agree. Okay. Good. Good. So her, her temperament has changed towards the dog. Feeling the amount of, of, of potential pressure. I, I'm, I more care about. You lessen the opportunity to physically cause her harm because you're constantly pu pulling. I corrected her, what, twice? Right. It's over. But look at the mental state of mind of this dog versus before when she was like, rah, rah, at the end of the leash. Right. So that prong collar, because it looks like a Chinese torture chamber, people, are, like you said, you were like, eh. Not even not because of that, just because you didn't want to have to put pressure, and I agree. Right. Good dog training requires minimal pressure. It's teaching, 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 operant conditioning, classical conditioning, positive reinforcement, and then the dog goes, oh, okay. So if I touch this on the burner and it's hot, I get burned, and you're, you know, per se, and you know that. So anyway, so now I'm going to, again, take the leash, put it on the, the slip, and this will tell us, one second back, yep. give me like two minutes. Cool. Heel. Ah, ah. Heel. Heel. Good girl. Heel. Opera conditioning. Rewarding the behavior you want. Paint the picture. Heel. Yes. Good girl. Heel. Good. With minimal force. It's beautiful. It really is. Good girl. But now I have a clearer line of communication, but all I care about is the mentality of the dog changing, which clearly she's good. In a good place. Yeah. So I'm going to switch to the prong again. Koda. Good touch. Good. So look at this. I want you to watch what's happening today. Curiosity versus reactivity, mm -hmm. right? So it changes the dog's behavior, and they're able, it's like peeling an onion. 
Now she's able to take that blanket of, I'm afraid, and you take it out, and now she's like, who are you? Mm -hmm. Right, so it's a different in, uh, intriguedness, I guess, if you will. So it's more like curiosity versus bar bar bar. Absolutely. First line of defense, I just did a, a, um, a podcast with a veterinarian who uh, specializes in uh, clinical studies and behavior with dogs, and she was telling me that the first line of defense for every single dog is what we would normally think would be food, when in actuality it's, it's protective mode. And so once we take like, hey, I got the wheel, you chill and you take it off, then she has the ability to go, who are you? Because I took the wheel, mm -hmm. okay? So what's it? Good, that was beautiful. So what just happened? Oh, oh, oh. Fable, leave it. That was beautiful because I, I just like seeing what I just saw. So what happened was, is you came into a sit as Lakota was approaching Chloe, and you made a really great decision by not punishing her for not sitting fast enough, mm -hmm. because she was actually uh, still learning who she was. Mm -hmm. Her senses were going, and there's other dogs in the room too. Sure. So instead of like being slap happy with the prong, which can shut a dog down, you said sit, and she goes, and she's figuring stuff out. Then she said, "That's that was a good decision." Mm -hmm. I really like that. So the the observation of her. Um, still taking in things and being a dog, mm -hmm. which I love, and the obedience part of sitting kind of slow is secondary to her behavioral uh, state of mind becoming better. So yeah, I can see that. do you feel like that's a better system? Now, Great. now take the leash and put it just on your, your other collar, mm -hmm. and then we'll do the same thing. Move her around. Okay. Okay. Move her around, and I just want to hold that sit. Let her be curious. If she gets up, don't be overcorrected. Ask her to sit again because my goal is for her to be a more confident, comfortable dog around dogs she doesn't know. Because, like you said, like if she plays with Harper and she plays with these other dogs, she's not like an inherently aggressive dog. It's no. just on the leash. She goes ah, and you need right. to be able to go whoa, 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 whoa. Right. Take it down a notch. Right. Well, let. Yep. Yeah. Just hold it, and you can reward her positively as she's doing. Good. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Seats. Left. Rewind. Good. Place. Good. Sit. Go touch. Fui. Stay. Give her all that praise.